Let's kick things off with the ongoing crisis in Texas, where half a million residents were still without power today. And more than 200,000 were without clean water because treatment plants are failing and pipes are bursting. Texans have been lining up for clean water from public spigots, boiling their own, or even trying to melt snow. Yeah, melting snow for clean water. I mean, you know that the infrastructure is screwed when your best option for water is to mug a snowman. But the saddest part is that these people are the lucky ones because it turns out one poor Texan had to travel 800 miles just to get heat, water, and electricity. Senator Ted Cruz, he is now facing a whole lot of questions after he was spotted on a plane traveling to Cancun, Mexico in the midst of this unfolding crisis in his home state of Texas. If you go on social media, you will see social media users posting multiple pictures of the senator and his family in the Houston airport waiting to board their flight. Ted Cruz! No, man, you gotta be shitting me, dude. Your people are literally eating snow right now and you're jetting off to Cancun? I'm not even mad that you were selfish. I'm mad that you were so stupid. How can you be in politics for 10 years and still have no idea how bad this would make you look? What were you thinking? I know my people are freezing and hungry right now. So what they need is a photo of my beach bod. Because if they see me in a Speedo, their eyes will burst into flames and the whole family can warm their hands over those flames. I mean, look, I get that Ted Cruz is tired. You know, the man deserves a break after trying so hard to overthrow the government. But this is not the time, Ted! When your constituents said they need clean water, they didn't mean go find a wet t-shirt contest in Cancun! I mean, seeing Ted Cruz skip town for the beach has been very frustrating for the people in Texas. But on the other hand, it has been really exciting for all the people in Cancun who got to meet him on the street. Wow, bro, I didn't know that Senior Frog was a real guy. That was awesome. And what's even worse is that when he got caught, instead of owning up to it and apologizing, he acted like a total Ted Cruz. Breaking right now, an update on the reports that Texas Senator Ted Cruz took a trip to Cancun as the state was dealing with massive power outages, something that had many of you upset online. The statement from Cruz saying in part, With school canceled for the week, our girls asked to take a trip with friends wanting to be a good dad. I flew down with them last night and I'm flying back this afternoon. Oh, I see. We all got this thing wrong. Ted Cruz wasn't going on vacation, people. He was just chaperoning his girls on the flight to Cancun. So in, so in some way, this was like a, a reverse taken. I want you to know that I'm a man with absolutely no skills whatsoever. And I'm gonna safely accompany my daughters on this trip. Seriously, Ted Cruz blaming his daughters for this is just gross. Being a good father means putting them on a bus, not throwing them under one. Although to be fair, maybe Ted Cruz just doesn't know what a good dad is. I mean, his dad killed JFK. Every day we're reminded of how terrible it would be to be ruled over by a self-financed melting (laughs) jack-o'-lantern. And Republican leaders know this better than anyone. The only problem is, that the candidate with the best chance of beating Trump is this guy. Look at Ted Cruz. He is now at 53% unfavorability. That is the highest unfavorability that he has seen throughout this campaign. He is growing more unpopular by the day. Yeah, and it's been this way his entire life. In fact, (laughs) in fact, when Ted Cruz was born, he was voted the worst baby in the maternity ward. (laughs) It was... There was just something insincere about the way he breastfed. There was just like a... <laughs> but, but the big question is, why do people hate Ted Cruz so much? And the truth is, there's a multitude of reasons. I mean, it could be because he paints gun control measures as a plot to steal everyone's guns while they sleep. Uh, or maybe they, they hate him because he wants special patrols for Muslim neighborhoods. Or maybe it's because he supports an abortion ban with no exception for rape or incest. Or maybe it's because he's the Zodiac killer. You never know <laughs> what it could be. Now, Ted Cruz knows how much people don't like him, which is why last night, he decided to participate in a CNN town hall to show his personal side. And uh, naturally, this made things worse. The Godfather, actually all three of the Godfathers, I, I love you, those movies. You like the third Godfather? I, I am an odd, I, I I've like never met Godfather anyone who liked the third III. Godfather. I will admit it in public, everyone else hated it. I actually thought it was a, a wonderful culmination. 
Really? <laughs> Godfather 3? <laughs> the movie everyone agrees is the worst Godfather? <laughs> like, the credits from the second Godfather are better than Godfather 3. <laughs> Saying you like Godfather 3 is like saying, you know what my favorite part of sex is? The part where you take off the condom and flush it down the toilet. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's what sex is all about. <laughs> well, you know what, Ted Cruz, it's not only his bad taste in movies that make him unlikable, he's also a liar. In fact, he lies so much that even his eight-year-old daughter is sick of it. Just watch in this clip how she called him out last night. They have karaoke machines they got for Christmas. They both have matching karaoke machines, and it is a little frightening with, with the two of them <laughs> singing Taylor Swift together. It is, it is uh -huh. amazing. We don't sing together. That's true. <laughs> we don't sing together, Dad. Lie all you want about Mexicans, but don't drag my karaoke <laughs> into this. Why don't they get her to moderate the debates? <laughs> no, just look how she shut him down. He even hung his, she was just like, that is not what happened. And he went, that's true. <laughs> I've never seen Ted Cruz. So, so as Ted Cruz approaches a, a possible nomination, a lot of Americans are grappling daily with the idea of what it would be like to live with Ted Cruz as president. And what may be the most alarming clue comes from the person who knows more than most. When I married Ted, we got back from our honeymoon, and he went off to the store and came home by himself. And I was completely shocked to see that he arrived back at our apartment with literally a hundred cans of Campbell's Chunky Soup. <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> One hundred cans of soup. <laughs> Ted Cruz went out to the store and bought 100 cans of soup. I don't, I don't think you understand. I don't think, I don't think you understand. This, this is 100 cans of soup. I can hide behind the soup. This is, this is so creepy. Just think about this. The first thing you do after your honeymoon is you buy a carload of chunky soup. What happened on the honeymoon? And why does anybody buy this much soup? What are you, taking a bath in it? What are you doing with this much soup? How do you, how do you even keep a straight face while checking out? Like, you're at the checkout counter, and, it, and you know what, I bet Ted Cruz is the kind of guy who'd go to the 10 items or less line and try and justify it. I could see him standing there, he's like, well, actually, now you gotta understand that this here is one soup, it's only one item. Even though there are 100 of them, it is the same soup under God's eye. Like, I'm sorry, but... But buying this much soup at one time is disqualifying. Anyone who thinks it's acceptable to buy this much soup at the same time cannot be president. Ted Cruz, you have to choose. You can either have the nuclear codes or you can have the soup, but you definitely <laughs> cannot have both. When the presidential race kicked off, Trump and Republican Senator Ted Cruz were like Amber Rose's finger in Kanye West's butthole. <laughs> Super tight. Oh, I'm a big fan of Donald Trump's. Ted Cruz is a friend of mine and a good guy. I like Donald Trump. He's bold, he's brash. Well, it is a little bit of a romance. I like him. He likes me. Jeez, you two, get a room. Yeah, just, just not this room, please. Any other room. Any other room. The journey from BFF to Frenemy began for these two when Cruz started to challenge Donald Trump in the polls. And now, with five days before the uh, Iowa caucus, it's turning into an all-out war. Donald is a fragile soul. Cruz, who is a nasty guy who can't get along with anybody. If you're afraid of Megyn Kelly, you're gonna be afraid of Vladimir Putin. Senators don't like him. The people he works with don't like him. Whoa, ease up, guys. You're both horrible. <laughs> you need to save some of that energy. Save some of that energy for hating Mexicans and Muslims, come on. You know, now, now usually in campaigns, uh, the top candidates draw supporters from inside their party, you know? But this is what's happening in this campaign. It's strange, because some Republicans aren't saying that they like Ted Cruz, they're just saying that they hate Donald Trump. And the other Republicans aren't saying that they like Donald Trump, they're just saying that they hate Ted Cruz. For example, Ted Cruz. Anyone who's ever worked with Ted Cruz or lived with Ted Cruz or met Ted Cruz, does not like Ted Cruz. 
The Wall Street Journal ran a scathing editorial against Cruz by calling him a phony. Bob Dole called Cruz an extremist. Warren Hatch, Dan Coats, and John Cornyn saying a Cruz presidency would be detrimental to the country. And those are his friends. <laughs> Everybody hates Cruz. It's so bad that when the Pope visited Congress, he was there like, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Ah, oh, Ted. <laughs> Go to hell, <laughs> bag. And peace be with you. And peace be with you. Now, on the other side of the coin, <laughs> conservative thought leaders like uh, Rick Perry, Glenn Beck, and uh, the National Review, well, they just hate Donald Trump. Trump is not a, a committed conservative. Donald Trump, I really truly believe, is a very dangerous man. The National Review came out against Trump featuring 22 conservative voices. They wrote, quote, Donald Trump is a menace to American conservatism who would take the work of generations and trample it underfoot. Made it sound like conservatism was gonna be like grapes and Donald Trump's just gonna be dancing on it. <laughs> What's impressive is they got 22 negative essays about Trump in one magazine. That's really good. I mean, Cosmopolitan can't even fit that many mind-blowing sex moves into one magazine. <laughs> yeah, they top out at 21, they do. And technically two are the same thing, just different hands. <laughs> I feel bad for the Republicans. I mean, having to pick between these two, you know, but all the, all the other candidates are so far below them that it doesn't seem like anyone has a choice. Donald Trump and Ted Cruz continue to dominate the GOP race. Some in the Republican establishment are not happy with the two front runners. Having to choose between being shot or being poisoned. Are they warning, warming to Trump because they can kill Cruz and they think, well, we'll kill Trump later. <laughs> this is almost like a political game of <laughs> marry, kill. It's just there's no marry. You just kill one and get <laughs> by the other. <laughs> For more. We turn to our uh, panelists, senior political analysts, Jordan Klepper and Hassan Minaj, everybody. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for joining me. So the big question is, who would you rather have as president, Donald Trump or Ted Cruz? Trump is worse. He's a loose cannon, no idea when he'll go off or what he'll destroy. I, I gotta disagree with you, Jordan. Cruz is pure evil. In his first 30 days, he would systematically destroy everything we hold dear. I say Trump is less bad. Okay, I disagree, Hassan. I'm sure Ted Cruz will eventually destroy the country, no doubt. But for me, having Donald Trump in the White House is like living with a blood clot. Any moment he could break loose and kill you instantly. Or, <laughs> or a blood clot might never kill you, whereas Cruz, is like bone cancer, 100% fatal. Okay, well, at least with cancer, you know it's coming. I mean, that's the upside to a Cruz presidency. We'll all be able to get our affairs in order just before our inevitable deaths. I, I hadn't thought of that. That's a, good, that's a good point. Cruz 2016. Wow, okay, so then Hassan, you now agree that Trump is the worst of the two? Well, Jordan is right. Trump is just too unpredictable. You can't give a guy like that nuclear weapons. Yeah, I mean, President Ted Cruz is definitely gonna nuke somebody, but at least we know it'll be another country. You know, Trump, <laughs> I mean, Trump might nuke America because some guy in Idaho made fun of him in a tweet. Well, <laughs> at least Ted Cruz has some core principles. Yeah, Hassan, you say principles. Although, given what those principles are, I mean, hair trigger, government shutdowns, uh, climate change denial. Well, I'm okay. That is a good point. Ted Cruz does represent the very worst of humanity. Uh, he is the reason I have yet to bring a child into this world. Yes. <laughs> Ted Cruz is a political vasectomy. So, Trump 2016. You know what? I I'm actually changing my mind again because Trump is like the Joker. Pure chaos. At least, you know, Cruz is focused and methodical. Okay, oh yeah, so Cruz is more like Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. plus you definitely know Cruz tucks his penis between his legs. Definitely. So, I'm gonna change back. I say Trump 2016. I I'm sorry guys, you're all over the place. So Hassan, you would put Donald J. Trump in charge of the US military. Oh no, I wouldn't even trust Trump with sharp objects. If he ever came to my house over for steak, I would make him use a spoon. <laughs> Well, Hassan, that's unrealistic. He wouldn't come to your house because he hates brown people. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's right. Brown people make terrible steaks. No, Jordan, that's... No, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan, that's not He's the right. point. That's... Where do I you even get these point. stereotypes? No, no, no. Well, that's a stereotype. Stereotypes come from some place. No, they Bad don't steaks. come from... Jordan, that's not the point. No, no, you Trump, guys, yeah. I make great steaks. I make amazing oh, steaks. Okay, guys, steaks are not great. Steak. I'm sorry. You guys, people don't know how to make good steaks. We got off the plot. Guys, please, just answer the question. Cruz or Trump, which Republican candidate is marginally less awful? Personally, 
I'm for bone cancer. So you're picking Ted Cruz? No, I want to get actual bone cancer. <laughs> he makes a great point. I hope to perish before the election as well. <laughs> Texas Senator Ted Cruz was at a restaurant last night when some protesters ordered him to go. And this was caught on camera, the Kavanaugh controversy forcing Texas Senator Ted Cruz to leave a DC restaurant last night. Take a listen. We believe survivors. We believe survivors. We believe survivors. We believe survivors. Oh, come on, people. Don't kick Ted Cruz out of a restaurant. <laughs> now he's just gonna be eating a stray cat. <laughs> No, 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 and by the way, don't feel bad for Ted Cruz. That was probably the best night of his life. <laughs> like in the car ride home, his wife was like, why are you smiling? He was like, we just got kicked out of that restaurant. Last time they kicked me out, it was just because I was Ted Cruz. Now it's because of Kavanaugh. I'm moving up, baby. March 4th. 2016. Let's cut waste, fraud, and abuse. It's easy to say it. Establishment Republican candidates were making their last stand against Donald Trump. And Senator Ted Cruz of Texas had a gross booger hanging on his lip. And then he ate it, as if none of us could see. This is Ted Cruz, the booger on the lip of democracy. Rafael Edward Cruz was born in Canada to an American woman and a former Cuban revolutionary. When Ted was four, the Cruzes relocated to Texas. Houston, we have a problem. Where his youthful ambition was the same as any higher order lizard, sex and domination. Well, my aspiration is to, uh, oh, I don't know, be in a teen tit film like that guy who played Horatio. You know, he was in Malibu Bikini Beach Shop. Well, other than that, uh, take over the world, world domination. Yes, young Ted Cruz was obsessed with boobs and power, two things he would struggle to get his hands on for the rest of his life. From there, it was on to Princeton University, where he befriended Craig Mazin, who, as the creator of the HBO series Chernobyl, is familiar with toxic disasters. Ted Cruz was my roommate. I, I did not like him at all in college. I want to be clear, because, I, I, you know, Ted Cruz is a nightmare of a human being. I have plenty of problems with his politics, but truthfully, his personality is so awful that 99% of why I hate him is just his personality. Awful, awful, awful person. Yeah. He's awful. Ted Cruz was so awful, this professional screenwriter could think of no other word to describe him. That's impressive. After graduating from Harvard Law School, Ted finally found someone who didn't hate him, which left him no choice but to marry her. We got back from our honeymoon, and he went off to the store and came home by himself, and he arrived back at our apartment with literally a hundred cans of Campbell's Chunky Soup. And I said, you don't buy a hundred of anything, much less canned soup. Well, you know, we're, we're, we can't do this. Uh, I'll be making things. And he said, no, I know you. You won't be making things. And then, because there was no room for both soup and a wife, Ted and Heidi lived apart for seven years. Cruz used that time to rise through the legal ranks, arguing eight cases before the Supreme Court, where he championed the rights of mentally ill prisoners to be executed by the state. But his most famous case was a passionate defense of one unusual Texas law. Cruz's Texas Solicitor General once defended a ban on the sale of sex toys. That's right. In a show of selfless devotion to the law, Ted Cruz defended a ban on sex toys, even though he himself is a complete dildo. In 2012, Cruz burst onto the national stage as a Senate candidate and darling of the Tea Party. Once elected, he put his mark on the Senate by filibustering Obamacare while showing off his first grade reading ability. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. What a treat to hear Dr. Seuss read by a Dr. Seuss character. To achieve his dreams of world domination, Ted knew he would need to leave an impression. And he left impressions everywhere. This one. Non-stop. Heidly ho, neighbor! Just a never-ending parade of barely recognizable voices. Liar! Shut up, witch! I'm not a witch, I'm your wife! Even though he couldn't really do any of them. 
in the immortal words of William Wallace, freedom! With charisma like that, there was only one thing for Cruz to do. I am announcing that I'm running for president of the United States. I was hyped, it was light in the back, back. Took a mic, no rights, had the right tracks. Soon, Ted was cruising toward victory. He had key endorsements. I've looked at the candidates. Ted Cruz is my man. A supportive family. Not a day goes by that my mom is not lifting me up in prayer. That's true. For hours at a time. And fresh ideas. Of course, in Texas, we cook bacon a little differently than most folks. Bacon. <laughs> mm, any hunter can track and shoot an animal, but it takes a true outdoorsman to use a gun on meat he already bought at the store. That's just how unlikable Ted Cruz is. He actually found a way to turn people off of bacon. But despite having the meticulous planning skills and foresight that's just coincidentally the hallmark of a serial killer, Ted Cruz failed to anticipate Donald Trump. Ted Cruz, he's a a absolute disgusting liar. He is like a little baby. Soft, weak little baby. This guy's a liar. Lion Ted Cruz, Lion Ted. Lies, oh, he lies. Donald Trump called his wife ugly and said his father right. was implicated in the conspiracy to kill JFK. At first, Ted took the high road, swallowing his pride and a few boogers along the way. But finally, he had had enough. Cruz got on stage at the RNC and he did not endorse Donald Trump. Vote your conscience. That pledge was not a blanket commitment that if you go and slander and attack Heidi, that I'm gonna nonetheless come like a servile puppy dog and say thank you very much for maligning my wife and maligning my father. The gauntlet had been thrown. No longer would Ted Cruz cater to Donald Trump's every whim. He drew a line in the sand and, oh, hold on, I'm getting a call. Hi, this is Ted Cruz calling. Uh, I was calling to encourage you to come out and vote on election day. Oh, Ted. With nothing left to do, Cruz headed back to the Senate, where he reclaimed his position as the most hated guy in the office. If you kill Ted Cruz on the floor of the Senate, and the trial was in the Senate, Nobody could convict you. I probably like Ted Cruz more than most of my colleagues like Ted Cruz, and I hate Ted Cruz. He's just a toxic coworker. He's the guy that microwaves fish. <laughs> there is nothing more dangerous than a reckless asshole who thinks he's smarter than everyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, Meet Ted Cruz. I'm beginning to understand why Ted Cruz has been hated by everyone, every place he's ever been, from kindergarten to the United States Senate. I am not endorsing Ted Cruz. I hate <laughs> Ted Cruz. And uh, I think I'll take cyanide if he ever got the nomination. God damn. Even people who don't know if mass shootings are bad thinks Ted Cruz f sucks. Chastened by this reception, Ted got to work rehabilitating his image. He began doing relatable stuff, like accidentally posting MILF porn on the anniversary of 9-11 and encouraging an insurrection against the government. We will not go quietly into the night. Look here, look. Ted Cruz's objection to the Arizona. His objection, he was going to sell us out all along. What? Look, objection to counting electoral votes of the state of Arizona. Wait, no, that's a good thing. All right, all right, all right. All right. I'm pissed, I'm pissed. This is where it is. Oh, no. Ted Cruz is so hateable that for a moment, even his biggest fans hated him by accident. Treason! Treason! But once the dust settled and the MAGA mob reluctantly decided not to murder him, Ted and his family headed back home to Texas to let things cool down in Washington. Unfortunately, things cooled down even more in Texas. As Texans wait for a thaw and power to their homes, Senator Ted Cruz is facing backlash after an alleged fellow passenger tweeted out this photo appearing to show Cruz on a flight to Cancun. He first uh, blamed the trip on his kids. That turned out to be a lie. The 24-hour trip to Cancun radically shifted America's view of Ted Cruz from a giant, unlikable asshole to... Actually, it didn't shift the view of him at all. But these are just small bumps on the road to his ultimate goal world domination. 
to Ted Cruz, the earth is a mere booger dancing on his lips. Tantalizing, mesmerizing, repulsive, waiting until the day he can swallow us whole and hope that no one saw it. <laughs> 